Thank you so much, and it's a pleasure to be here uh, with you all today to talk a bit about the development of rapid diagnostic tests for arboviruses and viral hemorrhagic fevers. I will focus the talk today on two infections, on yellow fever and dengue, and if there's time, we can touch a bit on Ebola as well. And really the objective here is to bring innovative life science uh, to equitable access, uh, which is the ultimate goal of uh, our activities at Melogic. So just to start really with a busy slide of partners and acknowledgements, and, and I know I've missed many, many people here, but really to show that this work only happens in partnership and mainly from people who are not supported to be doing this work, and we're incredibly grateful to all of them. And a special call out to our colleagues at the Institut Pasteur in Dakar, in Senegal, and the uh, World Health Collaborating Centre for Arboviruses and Viral Hemorrhagic Fevers, who are essential in our delivery of new products for epidemics. And really just to start with this quote from 2016 by Peter Sands and colleagues in the New England Journal. Infectious disease outbreaks that turn into epidemics and potential pandemics can cause massive loss of life and huge economic disruption. And we all know that from how the world has changed with COVID-19 here in the UK and everywhere. And global epidemics are increasing in their frequency, intensity and severity. We're poorly prepared for epidemics. Gaps are ubiquitous and that ubiquitous nature of the problem suggests a system-wide change is needed. And we are trying to make some introductions of new systems that can perhaps help address this in the coming years. We need diagnostics that are accurate, affordable and accessible, but really they're limited in terms of commercially available products. And so we really need to be shifting the target away from commercial return to ensure that these sporadic infections um, can have the appropriate technologies they need um, going forward. And of course, the role of diagnostics for epidemics can depend by the phase of outbreak, whether it's prior to the outbreak for surveillance and early detection. Yellow fever is a great example where it can take up to 77 days from index case to laboratory confirmation at the regional centres. And of course, in that time, it's too late. We have, we're in uh, outbreak and epidemic mitigation mode. There's, of course, early in the outbreak to verify cases, um, particularly in settings where there is a mixed um, series of infections that can cause similar symptoms. And then late in the outbreak, as we map surveillance and anticipated spread, and of course, hopefully post outbreak. And so here, there really is an opportunity for change. And here are just some insights from yellow fever rapid diagnostic development, because there doesn't exist um, many uh, rapid diagnostic tests for yellow fever, as I'll show you. Um, but we really think we can transform the path for equitable access to these kinds of technologies. And that's really through establishing four platforms. The first is open research. And what we've done at Melogic is partner very openly with IP Dakar in Senegal and Fio Cruz in uh, Brazil, of the two uh, regional continental reference laboratories for, for Africa and, and uh, South America. The second is product development, where in the UK we would start with the product development, host visiting scientists in particular from Senegal at the moment, but then shift it the other way around, where they host us and train us in their techniques. Thirdly, shared intellectual property, all of our IP, that of IP Dakar, and even the US CDC, although we haven't needed to use their reagents in the end, um, openly share that intellectual property to make sure that barriers were removed and we could just focus on seeing whether we can develop a test. And lastly, manufacturing facilities. And I put here UK in Europe and Senegal in Africa, because we've been able to create now responsive facilities that can move quickly in the event of an epidemic. So since 2016, we've started deepening our work in epidemics and we're looking to add more here, but really gonna focus on these three. There's Ebola, there's dengue and there's yellow fever. And the yellow fever program initially supported by FIND in Geneva um, was really to address a major public health risk where there is no WHO endorsed rapid test and no validated rapid antigen test. There is a multiplex um, assay by SD Biosensor, um, but reported performance is quite limited with IgM at 85% sensitivity, specificity 92, um, and that hasn't been verified widely. And the price per device um, is close to $10. And so what we're looking to do 
is delink manufacture for epidemics, particularly in low income settings, to be at the cost of production. And at this case, it would be $1 or less than $150. And the concept for moving away from IgM from yellow fever has really come from dengue. And really where you can see on the left, sensitivity based on PCR naturally drops for the early days of after illness onset. You can see uh, in the second box in figure NS1 uh, drops in a similar cadence a bit later perhaps. And then of course IgM increases between days one and five. And then the combination of the two gives you a very nice um, helpful sensitivity. Um, and so for dengue, of course, NS1 and or IgM positive results are interpreted as dengue infection. So the work we did in Senegal, thanks to the work of Usman Fai, Omar Ndiaye and Amadou Sal, started with an initial sensitivity panel of the test. So 27 PCR positives, 31 IgM positives, and then about 125 um, well-characterized negative samples. And these results have literally just come into us this week. Um, I've included two series of, of testing from October 2019 and February 2021. And despite some very high CT values suggesting relatively low viral loads, we see a sensitivity of 96% where we miss one of the 27 samples, despite the late presentations to this data set. And we don't see any correlation particularly between line intensity of the antigen test and the CT value, which is as we would, as we would expect. And so we are now, we believe, on the cusp of developing the first rapid antigen test for yellow fever, something that we have struggled with for the last few years. And we believe the model of looking away from commercial return has helped achieve that. Looking at specificity, we see a very good specificity where we only have one uh, discrepancy. And that discrepancy happened to be here in the multi cross-reacting samples that were IgM positive for yellow fever, dengue, West Nile, and Zika. The flavivirus is being very, very difficult sometimes to characterize. And on PRNT, this sample um, had equivalent results for dengue and yellow fever. So the hypothesis they're looking at actually was that it was a co-infection between dengue and yellow fever and may not be a, a false positive, but just a discrepancy. So really encouraged by these results. And this has been replicated here, the specificity panel in Brazil, where no cross-reactivity to dengue NS1, and then no cross-reactivity, some additional pathogens of importance there. So turning very briefly to the work on dengue that we're looking to advance under the same terms, what we really were guided by was this map. And this is the map from the US CDC that was reviewed and updated this year, I read on the website. And you can see this light blue across much of Africa. And you can see Senegal in this, in this sporadic or uncertain category. There's nothing uncertain about it. Dengue outbreaks happen every year in, in Senegal at an increasing frequency. And it's been well documented um, by the Institut Pasteur de Dakar since 2009. So we need to look at this map in much greater detail. And we need a low cost, effective dengue test that is reliable, that can be used in urban settings, where there might be less malaria, actually, and much more dengue than is appreciated. And you can see that Mauritania is no evidence of risk. But again, our test was evaluated in Mauritania by the World Health Organization there uh, with, with dengue outbreak samples from 2018. So again, there is evidence. We just need to be reviewing it and collating it better. Um, we also need to appreciate that the United States and now Southern Europe are at risk. The first autochthonous transmission happened in France, Spain and Italy uh, 2019 and the US 2020. And where there can be Zika, chikungunya, of course there can be uh, yellow fever. And with only 120 to 140 million uh, vaccine supply across four facilities in Brazil, Russia, France, and Senegal, it's critically important that we, um, we mitigate the risks that yellow fever could pose one day, and dengue as well. Comparing the, the tests that we're, we're developing, we 
we see a lower sample requirement, 40 microliters for the NS1, 10 for the IgM, IgG, can be up to 120 on some of the NS1s, which is inappropriate, we would argue, for, for children. Uh, turnaround time, we've looked at 10 minutes to keep it as quick as possible. And in terms of performance we've seen, um, we have seen a quite a good performance across 300 samples uh, for NS1, IgM, and also IgG, which I just noted isn't reported here. And you can see the huge variability from the LSHTM, International Diagnostic Center, landscape of performance of the existing kits. And so something that we really need to address in terms of reliability for those presenting with, with fever. We can also digitize these test results. And so I think another good way of documenting uh, the epidemic of dengue and seeing what we can do about gathering the evidence base in a much more effective way. But really the most important thing for us has been the specificity. As you saw with the yellow fever, flaviviruses cross-react widely. And in, in Brazil, um, the current test deployed has a 50% specificity between dengue and Zika. And with co-circulating epidemics in dengue, it's critically important that we do better. And here, looking at the 73 most cross-reactive samples that they have in, in, in the Brazilian Federal Laboratory of Fiocruz, it was 100% cross-reacting on, their, on, their, on the very good test, the PanBio test, but the one that they use as routine. And we saw 12%, uh, nine cross-reactivities out of that 73. And we think that's in part because we've integrated virus-like particles for the first time into a rapid test. So displaying each of the four dengue serovars in a rapid test through using vaccine technology. And it seems to be um, certainly making uh, some, some progress here in the, in the Brazilian setting. And so thank you to Anna Bispo and Flavia Levy, whose work this is. And perhaps just to end on this and some optimism that we're seeing here in Senegal, not only do we think these Diagnostics can be developed together, but they will be made in Senegal. There's no need to make them in the UK, Europe, Asia anymore. And so here, the world's first manufacturing facility dedicated to epidemics, led by uh, this gentleman here on the right, Dr. Sher Tidian Dian, with Ibrahim Apai, Ramata Fal, and Umar Anjai being the founding four members. You can see now there's 40 staff. And from an idea and a plan to uh, a fully-fledged manufacturing facility that's independent, um, I think the, the, the future um, for health security is bright and we look forward to partnering with them in the future. Thank you.